Hi everyone, this is Greg here and welcome to Just A Meme podcast where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Today we have Uchi joining us from Africa Hacks where they are building a platform for hackathon organizers to run their events better. Uh, welcome Uchi. Thanks Greg, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so I know, I know it's early there but hopefully we can kind of jump in and have a, have a decent chat here. Um, and yeah, to kind of jump straight into the questions, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and how did you get to this point now, I guess? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Greg. So, um, Uchi, I always say Uchi as in Gucci. Uchi. And, uh, okay. Yeah, Uchi as in Gucci, yeah. And I'm a developer, a blockchain developer. Okay. And I'm also the founder of Africa Hacks. So at Africa Hacks, what we do is that we enable hackathon organizers or corporates to run hackathons and innovation challenges. And prior to Africa Hacks, I've uh, worked in the financial uh, services industry, and I actually moved from Nigeria in 2013 to Canada. So it's been like a big transition, and uh, my experience has been based on my experience in both continents. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so you were working in the financial sector. Was that kind of where you kind of f first started hearing about crypto or was it was it just in your spare time, I guess? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, I was working uh, as a developer and then I went to a meetup. I didn't know about blockchain. This was like maybe 10 or so years ago. So I went oh, to wow, blockchain really early. Meetup. Yeah, and then uh, I was just kind of chatting with a few people there and someone was like, hey, have you heard about this? stuff called block day Bitcoin. I was like, hmm, it sounds kind of fishy. Mm -hmm. But he made he made me download the wallet. <laughs> and I downloaded the wallet and he transferred me, I think, uh, point five Bitcoin or something like that. And I didn't really know like that it could become this valuable. And I was just like, hmm. And then after I got home I started looking into it more. And after that I applied for a role as a blockchain developer at one of the banks here in Canada. And I got okay. there to build blockchains for digital identity. That's interesting. So a bank in Canada was doing this, what, 10 years ago? They were starting to look into blockchain because it really doesn't so, seem like it's, you know, we're only now yeah. talking about institutional investment into it, but. Yeah. So yeah, the interesting. Same, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So what they were doing was that they were looking at they put together an experimental team to kind yeah. of uh, study this technology. And uh, what they were doing was looking at ways to use blockchain for client identity management because they found out that there was lots of duplication across the different lines of businesses, even at the bank. Yeah. And they needed a way for customers to share information across multiple lines of businesses. Okay, cool. So then this decentralized identifier idea mm. did it did it actually kind of work in the end or was it one yeah. of those you got kind of <laughs> yeah so it was just an experiment but for some reason we filed a patent for it the patent is still out there <laughs> <laughs> nice okay cool so that was maybe your introduction to blockchain and then in the in the meantime you kind of started to spin up was it niger hacks was that was that when that was born yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in 2018, I started thinking about uh, my experience as a student because as a student, I attended over 30 hackathons across wow. the world. Yep. So I, I did, I did a two two at, at Harvard. I did one at Stanford. I did a couple at Waterloo in Canada, and I lots of hackathons. So, and in 2018, I was thinking about the experience I had attending those hackathons and how that could make an impact for people in Nigeria, where I'm originally from. So I was like, maybe let's start a hackathon and get a few people together to build stuff and then see how we can invite employers to get them jobs. Because I mean, for me, hackathons were instrumental in my career. So I was looking for ways to uh, use hackathons to connect people to jobs also. And that's what, how Ninja Hacks was born. We started it and it moved on from Ninja Hacks and now Africa. Okay, so it kind of uh, grew to a, a level where you thought, mm -hmm. actually, this needs to kind of go outside, just focusing on Nigeria, and we'll build. Yeah. We'll go into kind of Africa hacks, where we're also developing a platform 
to kind of yeah. help other people run these throughout Africa or kind of just generally? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, originally we we're going to start with just being throughout Africa, but now we're expanding and we're seeing lots of people reach out to us even outside of Africa to organize hackathons. And for last year hackathon, we had people from Russia participate. We had some people from Europe, and it was really like interesting just seeing everyone come together on the platform to build. And funny story, when we first started Ninja Hack, it was like very challenging to mm. to get started, to raise funding, get sponsorship and things like that, right? Because, I mean, we're just random people. No one knew about me yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I, and and all that. So reaching out to sponsors by email and asking them to sponsor was, like, very, very challenging. I think we raised zero dollars initially. And then we're like, maybe let's take a step back and take a more data-backed approach. So what mm. we did was that we looked at all past hackathons for the last 12 months. Right? We looked at all of those hackathons uh, and the hackathon website. And then we extracted all the sponsors of the hackathons, and we then ranked them based on like the number of hackathons we sponsored. We also looked at what sponsors were sponsoring what prizes. So yeah. once we're back to this, once we had those, that data, we then started reaching out to them on Twitter, not even email. So we're like, yeah. hey, sponsor, we're having this hackathon. We're expecting 300 people. Would you like to sponsor the prize for this? So based on the company, what they do, and based on the information we had about like previous hackathons that they that they already sponsored. And that was like a very good approach that worked for us. And we got about 32 sponsors in in the first time that we that we did that. Wow. No, that's not a, that's like I suppose people would call that growth hacking. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's definitely a cool one where you do something quite manually, but it kind of um, it's a really a strategic way or tactical way to approach getting a uh, getting your name out there. No, that's that's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, so kind of onto Africa Hacks. It's a platform for people to to help people run hackathons to kind of, I guess, get more people interested in running hackathons as well. Um, how does the kind of uh, grant for the web stuff fit in? Um, how how we kind of met? How how would that fit into the platform at the moment? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, for grant for the web, I heard I heard, I heard about grant for the web last year. And I started looking into web monetization, right? Yeah. And then since we already do hackathons, I, I thought it would be a good idea to organize a hackathon for the web focused on web monetization. So really bringing people together to build on a build web monetization, more monetized solutions, both content creators and, and builders. So that's how we got the grant to really facilitate a hackathon focused on, on web monetization. And so far, it's been an amazing experience. The Grant for the Web team has been very supportive and also the team at Coil and Mozilla. So we're providing uh, support with regards to resources that the uh, participants at the hackathon needed. We're providing uh, speakers and also all of the prizes and Coil credit for everyone. So it's been instrumental to helping lots of people in Africa and the rest of the world to get started with web monetization. So one of the things we did with, from the hackathon was that the top projects, uh, all of the things, all of the team members got a laptop. And, that it, and in addition to that, uh, we, also, we also then went on to have a post hackathon program. Yeah. Where, where we introduced the 60 participants to web monetization in six weeks. So they started with no idea of web monetization. So it's like an no, accelerator. So so you yeah, had like the incubator sort of mm, set up after the hackathon yeah. for top teams, was that? Or was that yeah, just the top so, or handpicked? So this was, yeah, this was uh, anyone that wanted to learn about web monetization in a more okay. focused, in a more, in a more, in a more focused setting. Right? Yeah. So we, we had that. Oh, cool. No, no, that sounds really great. So, yeah, so you had the uh, Coil and Grant for the Web kind of sponsoring the hackathons. Uh, top right. team's got uh, laptops and stuff. That's really cool. Um, I suppose, um, yeah, kind of looking looking forward then, um, what's kind of the grand vision for Africa Hacks? I guess maybe you might have to yeah. drop the uh, Africa at some pit if you're already a global community. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, quite good yeah. nice focus early on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very challenging, right? To kind of 
scale out of the name because now we have this large community that is larger than just the Africans and people of African descent. So, mm. and when you hear Africa, you automatically think like just the hackathon. But yeah. we're exploring ways to uh, potentially extract the hackathon and innovation uh, organizing platform from Africa Hacks itself so that anyone can use this platform to organize an event, a hackathon or an innovation challenge. And ultimately, we want to be the platform that powers communities, right? Because at Africa Hacks, we've been able to build lots of internal tools and processes that enable Africa Hacks as an organization to manage its over 30,000 members in multiple like uh, layers of abstraction uh, between Africa as itself. So the community has like the core circle, then there are a couple of other circles around that. Like yeah. we've been able to build a platform to facilitate this. So how do we like make this platform available to other communities to grow? Because I mean, with web monetization, the passion economy and people wanting to monetize their skills, and also interact with lots of people. We see lots of opportunities in in community building and powering communities to be successful. So that's where we are looking to go. Okay, oh, that's that's quite uh, that's, uh, that's cool. It must, it must um, kind of take a lot of uh, focus and energy, I imagine, to get that kind of thing off the ground in the beginning. Like you, you having to trawl over all those websites to get the sponsorship. Uh, organizing people I know is just a headache and yeah, yeah but go, looking into the future yeah I totally agree I think communities on web3 as it as it's been yeah. named <laughs> um, yeah. will be so important um, it'd be yeah really exciting to see kind of where you go from there um, kind of uh, rounding it off then just as a kind of random question I probably forgot to tell you about this one before but uh, what are your other yeah. favorite kind of crypto projects um, if there are any, like outside of maybe Grant for the Web and Coil, like is there any other floating around that caught your attention recently? Uh, it's yeah, been kicking off sure. in a big way. <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure. So I think the, the Near Protocol, it's really uh, they're doing a good job with Near. Yes. The same. The same. We've with, uh, we've actually built on them before as a as a team. Okay. So yeah, we're quite okay. familiar with them. We we won some tokens actually. That have gone okay. up ex exponentially in value, so they're funding yeah. some of our operations now. So we know them quite well, wow. and we're quite happy with wow. them. <laughs> That's amazing. And also, I think Ripple is one of their investors too. So Ripple invested yes. in uh, Near, which is amazing. So there's the connection between like uh, Coil and also uh, Near. Yeah, like being that Ripple is an investor in both of them, and I think yeah. like the the philosophy also aligns a bit whereby uh, they are conscious of how the speed transaction uh, cost and also like uh, the use case like how useful uh, crypto will be to the general masses i mean coil is doing that uh Nia is doing that and the yeah. future of really powering communities and content creators uh, and enabling people to end in a transparent way where it's something that I'm really looking forward to and also seeing how uh, Africa has and also can also tie into that and make an impact in that space. No, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I love your project. I think it's it's something that's really great. And I think the, yeah, Africa is such a hotbed of innovation. I think we'll see, you know, the next trillion billion dollar market caps if, if it's yeah. token or companies coming out of there, like, it's only a matter of time, really. I think the work you're doing is really laying the groundwork to get people excited into the crypto yeah. space and help kind of bank the unbanked. On, yeah. I think it's super important. Um, yeah, I mean that, that's that's great. I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to kind of touch on. Um, otherwise, we can wrap yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, like the last thing I wanted to just touch on is oh, yeah. what you spoke about, like the the, the potential of Africa. So, I, I think yeah. it's really huge. Even last week, a company just one other company just reached a one billion dollar valuation from Nigeria. They are a payment oh. platform, and so today they just announced also a partnership with uh, PayPal to enable lots of Nigerians to be able to access PayPal payment because that wasn't a thing before now. So yeah. I think the continent is really opening up, and there are lots of untapped potential. So yeah. with regards to investment opportunities and also companies to be built. Right, so it's just like you have 
hundred thousand dollars in the US or in, in London. And if you take that to Africa, that could go maybe further than how uh, how you might go in other parts of the world. So yeah. like investing small, smaller amounts would yield greater returns for the long term in Africa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it go it goes a lot fur- further. Um <laughs> No, yeah. no, excellent. Um, yeah, really looking forward to kind of staying tuned. Uh, anyone who's uh, kind of listening, uh, there's there'll be links in the show notes. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks, Hachi, for your uh, time. Uh, really great to talk to you about Africa hacks, and I'm really excited to see where you guys go. Um, yeah, and anyone who's listening, please do get involved. Give us a like, send us some comments and a review, and uh, please also subscribe to get the latest and uh, yeah spread the spread the word of crypto is coming <laughs> i think i think that's probably a good way to end on and uh, africa hacks is coming more importantly <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah okay bye